Behold, Airbox version 1.2. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Orbital Potato, and today I'm going to be showing you around this classic game. Now, first, I just want to talk about some of the uh, some of the menus, and and you've got Sound FX, and you can choose between digital sounds and music, and we'll explore some of them later on. You can choose the game speed, and for the purposes of uh, demonstration, we're going to go into turbo. Um, player types, right, so you can have multiple humans, you can have AI components, or you can just turn companies off completely. Um, we can choose the difficulty, and the difficulty ranges between standard, hard, and hardest. And we're, of course, just going to go for standard here, because even on standard, this game is very challenging. You can also randomize the city size and have a new plane every year. You can change your base. You could change it to any town on or any town or city on the entire map, but we're just going to stick with Miami in this case. And easy first three years off or on. Yep, we're going to go for on because this game is very difficult, as I've said. Um, you can also zoom into here, which gives you a more detailed, uh, detailed information about the size of the airports, and so you can see everything uh, in a bit more detail. So. For example, we can look at Atlanta, and that's got 67%, which means it's not quite as big as Miami on 70%. Um, likewise, over here, Washington, 72%, and New York, that's 78%. So what is Airbucks? Well, Airbucks is a, an airline strategy simulation game where you build up your own airline. Um, obviously, this was released quite a while ago in 1993, or 92, should I say. Um, and it's it's formed around building up your own airline. And there, of course, you've got some fantastic uh, digital sounds. Um, yes, it's 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 based around building up your airline. So it's it's an airline tycoon game to uh, uh, to put it simply. So I'm going to show you a bit of gameplay, um, and then we'll talk about a bit more about the genre and and some of the features later on. First thing we want to do is negotiate a new site. Now, the plane that we have at the moment, I know for a fact, only does a thousand miles. Um, this might seem like not very many, and yes, you'd be correct, uh, it's not very many, but as you can see, we are in October 1946, so this is just the end of, uh, of the Second World War, and, and we are a, a brand new airline called Airbucks, and we need to make it in the world. So... We've just tried to negotiate uh, for Atlanta, and if we go to here and check out progress report, it says Atlanta, Atlanta, and we're in the final phase of negotiation. Now you can negotiate for a new for new landing rights every month, um, and at the same time that you're doing that, your competitors will also be trying to negotiate for new landing rights. Um, so this is the world, and here we go. So as you can see, some other companies have acquired uh, landing rights for other airports as well. Um, and they are going to start services to those airports. And we are going to try and start, start a service to Atlanta. So what we need to go into here is since we already have a plane, uh, and I can show you that by listing the planes. Um, this is the flight number. We've got the type, the type of airplane, the DC-3. Um, this is its speed and um, passengers and its range, how old it is, and you know how far, how, how many services it's, it's offering at the moment. Um, so we can give this a route, and we can do that through the, uh, through the slightly, uh, I would say, slightly difficult to navigate user interface. Um, it's definitely showing its age, um, but that's not really an excuse for, for such a, a tragic interface um, and I'm not completely sold on the experience that the user gets through this interface because it's very difficult to understand and it does take a lot of getting used to and even I'm still you know after after playing quite a few hours into this uh, I'm still getting used to it so that's our route plan we'll go in here and of course you can hear those fantastic digital sounds uh, those sick beats going um, now we can allocate prices to first class economy class and cargo now, it's uh, it's a bit it's it's quite difficult to set the prices, but what I tend to go for is 45, matching on the sort of distance, um, and then we go maybe half that, so 23. Oops, 23. There we go, and then cargo. We'll put that at 21. 
um, and then we'll just replicate the highlighted line and then we can price check the root so if there was any um, if there was any of our competitors flying there we could check their prices and perhaps undercut them and now we can check the plain income right so we're going to get a total uh, of 822 bucks for that um, but it's going to cost us 792 to do that so good um, we could try increasing our prices perhaps and seeing if that makes us a little bit more money up again will that make us more money 900 yep good 990 can we break a thousand 1004 1034 no that's back down so if we lower it we can we can see that this is probably about the maximum amount of money we're going to get uh, for, from this route so so we'll go and do that and then we will assign this to the plane and now you can see we have our first route so that is absolutely fantastic and we will start making money as soon as <laughs> yep, those those fantastic sound effects in use as as per normal um so yeah the options menu well this is the entirety of the options menu uh very very basic no no graphics options at all just just this the user interface as i have uh, explained earlier is is very clunky this game is very slow um you know for its time even it was a a pretty clunky and slow game so so that's not fantastic but uh, but it's interesting to look back and and have a look at how things were done um, so yeah, this is all the routes. We can of course buy, sell planes, alter our ticket prices, we can refit the current plane, we can make it more comfortable by, um, for example, introducing quality staff, but of course that's going to cost us more money, so we're not going to do that. Um, we can look at the income of our planes, so we we'll see that we're making that much money and it's costing us that much money, that's great. Cargo, of course, as the game advances, there will be specific cargo jobs available all over the world and we can spend sp send specific planes to go and pick up that cargo and, and make a make a pretty penny on that. Uh, demand report as the game progresses, this will give you a, a world demand of, of where cargo needs to be. Um, of course, we're, we're, we're less than two months into the game. Finances, this is interesting, right? So you can look at the plane income, you can look at cargo income, and you can look at service income. Uh, we can look at our entire bottom line, and you can see that, you know, we've we've got that much money and we are going out or we have spent this much money and that's it's good to stay on top of it's good to stay on top of that should i say valuation we can check how much we're we're worth in comparison to to other folk and um, we can adjust our we can adjust the wages that we pay our staff so if we were uh we are not doing very well then we could reduce our wages to perhaps 10 percent and um, we can look at our fleet size, you know, so, th so there's a whole, in comparison to, to our competitors, so, you know, there's a whole, there's a whole number of things you can do with this game. And it is, a, it's very in-depth. If, if you're a, if you're a certain plane lover like myself, I mean, you know, I'm, I, I do enjoy uh, the classic, the classic airplanes myself. And uh, the DC-3 was, was, you know, the airplane that really, that really made this, uh, the entire, the entire airline industry possible. And then, of course, you've got bank, and and then you can just you know check your balance, and you can get a loan, and of course you can buy uh, you can buy shares in in other companies, which is interesting. You can you know you can buy and and sell if they've got any on the market, or you know you can sell if you want to raise raise a quick buck. Um. So yeah, this uh this game this game can do a lot. It's uh it's a very good game. And what I think we're just gonna do is I think we're gonna buy a second plane. Let's uh let's buy another DC three. Why not? Yeah, let's, let's leave it like that, and let's, um, let's assign you to the same route. Good, so now we've got two planes running on the same route, which should uh, make us a bit more money, which is what we're after, yeah. Good, so I, of course, am alright at this game. It's, 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 an, uh, it's, it's a very enjoyable game, and I do like it. Um, apart from the user interface, of course, and the clunky, the clunky mouse, and the fact that you know it's it's very slow, but I do like it, and I do like the principle, and it's and it's very good, right? So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load into a game, and we're gonna go here, and we're gonna load, and we're gonna click yes. So this is something that uh, this is this is what your game can develop into once once you have uh, once you've played for a while. 
So as you can see, we have a absolute ton of planes. And we've got the see, we've got lots of different types of planes. You know, we've got DC threes, we've got the Viscount. You know, lots of lots of classic planes. And you can, you know, you can get 707s, 737s, 757s, 747s. Get a lot of different planes as you progress. And this is still only 1951, and you know we've already passed the the one million mark. So we can go and have a look at what sort of uh, what sort of planes are an option. Yep, 707, the Electra, uh, the DC-8, and of course the DC-3, the classic DC-3. So um, there's a whole number of things that you can do. Um, but it is a very enjoyable game, but it is uh, very slow and, and perhaps not exactly what everybody's looking for in a strategy game these days. But, uh, but I thought it would be an interesting look just to see what, how they made games, you know, a couple of years ago and and quite a lot has changed quite a lot has changed and um, currently it doesn't look like we're offering any services to Europe uh, I'm sure we could it's not that far away it seems like we're only uh, we're only offering services in America and we've just acquired landing rights to the Azores which means that we can start chaining across to uh, to Europe so that was a quick look at Airbox um, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, then uh, then leave a like and subscribe. You can get this game for free online, and I will leave a link for you just down below. Uh, my name's been Over the Potato. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.